Thanks, Raphael. Uh, as uh, Raphael said uh, at the beginning, my name is Gustav Bjorkston. I'm the Chief Technologist at Access Now, and uh, it's great to be here and uh, sharing information with you all. So as some other panelists have already mentioned, uh, not all shutdowns are the same. Um, so uh, I like to sort of categorize them into three uh, sort of basic um, uh, sort of attributes that uh, they affect different services. They are implemented with uh, varying uh, degrees of severity and they are implemented at different scales. So uh, severity would be throttling versus blocked, um, different scale local versus uh, say national. Uh, and those will have an impact on uh, what type of circumvention is possible and whether or not uh, VPNs are a, uh, a useful circumvention tool uh, in the circumstances. Um, but I'll just note here that uh, there's a natural tension um, uh, for governments uh, or, or entities implementing uh, shutdowns and that tension is uh, the collateral damage uh, that a shutdown will cause. So they're obviously implementing a shutdown for a purpose uh, that they wish to uh, to affect, but uh, shutting down services also impacts things like uh, the ability for citizens to conduct business. Um, so I think that economical impact is probably the biggest uh, collateral damage and therefore uh, any government implementing a shutdown and particularly over time as they get um, you know, better, <laughs> or they learn from their experiences of implementing shutdowns, they try to narrow uh, the shutdown to target uh, the specific population or specific um, content that they are trying to, uh, to uh, stop. Uh, so just, I'll give you some examples uh, of this. Uh, so uh, it was already mentioned that we see a lot of shutdowns in relation to school exams. So um, uh, these are sort of usually the, nas the nationwide uh, end of school uh, exams. Um, and, you know, ostensibly this is to prevent cheating. Um, so, uh, but these shutdowns in terms of the service will generally be just mobile data. Uh, because they're trying to prevent cheating in the exam, we're talking about people in those exams with mobile devices. So the service is mobile data, the severity is um, usually uh, a total, you know, a block of that uh, service and the scale is national. Uh, so a VPN is not gonna be useful in that example. Um, uh, the severity and the, the, particularly the service in that circumstance will prevent you from using a VPN. Um, but then we saw, you know, other shutdowns, like a shutdown in uh, Venezuela uh, that just targeted the images of a particular social media platform. And they did this to suppress images of uh, police brutality, which were being shared uh, on that platform. Uh, so the service was uh, Twitter images. Uh, the severity was a block uh, of the servers providing those images and the scale was national. But in that circumstance, a VPN uh, would be useful. Uh, so, um, yeah, so it sort of goes without saying that the more services that are affected and the, uh, the greater the severity uh, uh, and the larger the scale, the more difficult it is likely to be to circumvent. And given that I only have uh, 15 minutes. I'm going to focus very much on VPNs um, for circumstances where VPNs are not appropriate circumvention tools. So there are other options, but they're generally much more difficult to implement, uh, require, you know, higher uh, levels of uh, technical competence and uh, often require a lot of uh, pre-preparation as well. Um, but I will let you know who you can contact uh, in order to get more information about those. So one of the most common forms of shutdowns we see is where authorities block access to one or more platforms. So these are usually social media platforms and instant messaging platforms, uh, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, uh, Signal, things like that. 
Uh, and this is the circumstance where VPNs are most definitely uh, a likely technology to allow for circumvention. Uh, but the thing is, what, what to look for? What to look for in uh, selecting a VPN? Um, and when I am talking about this in this context, I'm not talking about the things that uh, the vast majority of VPN comparison sites out there are going to talk about, uh, because I'm talking about choosing a VPN for safety, uh, for your safety when you're uh, attempting to uh, do a circumvention. Whereas most VPN comparison sites are going to be talking about uh, things like the speed and the cost, um, uh, you know, the, the VPNs with the most features. And those things are not uh, uh, the most important when it comes to uh, uh, safety. So in the context of shutdowns uh, where safety may be uh, a great issue, um, there are some factors which are very, very important to examine in choosing uh, your VPN. And those factors are logging. So uh, what is logged and for how long uh, that data is kept? Uh, what jurisdiction the VPN servers are located in? And what jurisdiction the VPN vendor company is registered in? Because the thing is that all commercial operators of VPNs are subject to law uh, and they are subject to provide data uh, to law enforcement agencies uh, when those agencies request it. So, uh, so therefore, what is logged, how long that data is kept for, where the servers are located and where the company is registered, all play uh, primary uh, factors into choosing a VPN that is safe for you, given your location. Um, so there are uh, some uh, places where you can look at information from VPNs to, uh, to make determinations about these things. Uh, so I would point you to a website called uh, safetydetectives.com uh, slash best dash VPNs. Um, and don't, you know, don't pay attention to their recommendations because as I said before, those recommendations are aimed at people wanting to, you know, view Netflix in a country that they're not normally in or something like that. Uh, so I do not endorse the recommendations uh, on this page, but if you scroll down the page uh, uh, until you get to uh, a section labelled simple VPN comparison chart, or if you want uh, more detailed information, there is also detailed VPN comparison chart um, that uh, will provide you with details on things like what is logged, um, what the data retention is. Um, it'll give you a lot of insight into the policies of the companies, uh, the vendors themselves, and so on. Uh, so it's a great resource for, for deciding uh, what type of resource, uh, what type of VPN uh, you would uh, like to select for you that's appropriate for you. And uh, those charts, by the way, are downloadable. So you can download them as an Excel spreadsheet, or you can even uh, download as a machine passable CSV uh, if you want to pull it into your own uh, database uh, and uh, keep it uh, on there for your record. Um, so we have to talk next about anonymity. Uh, so, you know, while a VPN does hide your IP address from the host of the resource, such as a website that you're visiting, um, uh, and while some VPNs will allow you to do things like pay for the service anonymously, usually through a cryptocurrency, uh, but VPNs in general do not provide you with uh, anonymity against a well-resourced adversary. So if anonymity is a key criteria of yours, uh, then I suggest you uh, you look at the Tor network as the best option. So um, their website is at torproject.org uh, and that really is your best option in terms of a VPN-like service uh, that will give you the best anonymity. Um, so, 
uh, in terms of the jurisdiction issues, uh, and there's also legal issues as well. So there are countries where VPN use is restricted or banned. Uh, so to find out uh, that information and uh, to find out uh, jurisdiction-based information, uh, there is also a website, uh, thebestvpn.com. Uh, and again, I do not endorse their VPN recommendations, but if you uh, go to their page and click on the tab uh, labeled VPN research, uh, and then scroll down until you reach the links labeled are VPNs legal? And uh, the second link is uh, VPN jurisdictions reviewed. Uh, that will provide you with very good information uh, on those two topics. Uh, so check that out as well. Uh, as I think it was Maria already mentioned um, uh, that the, you know the UNI uh, data shows that often in uh, in conjunction with a shutdown, uh, VPNs themselves will be blocked. So sometimes they will block uh, the uh, the VPN vendors' uh, servers, uh, but sometimes they will just block the download of the VPN app uh, itself. So uh, you know, be prepared. Uh, be prepared now for a shutdown, even if you believe that uh, that's unlikely. Download the uh, the VPN apps uh, ahead of time, uh, so that uh, if they do uh, block access. Um, uh, you're you're still able to uh, to run the app. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I have to say about uh, VPNs. Uh, I've still got a few minutes, so I will briefly talk about uh, some of the other things. Uh, I mean, VPNs also may work in circumstances beyond um, sort of platform level uh, shutdowns. Um, they may work in cases of things like DNS manipulation or um, deep packet inspection. So, uh, you know, you, your mileage may vary, but there's certainly a lot of circumstances where VPNs simply aren't going to work. So anything where, um, uh, you know, data itself is uh, blocked in its entirety or whether uh, they shut it, shut down the network or the communication system in a very, very significant way by doing things like powering down uh, cell towers. So there's just literally no signal there, no network for you to, to reach. Um, so uh, there are some other technologies. Um, uh, Yvonne mentioned briefly uh, some of them. Uh, so, uh, sort of these peer-to-peer -peer, uh, devices or peer-to-peer -peer mechanisms so that you can connect uh, phones to phones and hopefully, uh, particularly if the, if the shutdown is localised, uh, jump to a point where you can get back onto a, a communications network that's still in operation. Uh, but there are devices, things like uh, the GoTenna uh, mesh network, um, uh, Briar, which is a store and forward uh, type of app. Uh, there's also, um, you know, sort of experimental technologies which may or may not work for you, uh, but which uh, could be explored. Uh, things like uh, data over voice with DOV technologies. So, uh, in a lot of circumstances, it is, you know, mobile data is the first thing to be shut down. Um, so uh, if that is the case, uh, then you may be able to uh, get access by using a service that does data over the voice uh, uh, channel for mobile. Uh, but that's, you know, pretty experimental at this stage. Um, so those are uh, some possibilities uh, beyond that. And for, you know, really sort of catastrophic shutdowns, you need to implement some form of alternative infrastructure uh, and that is a, a fairly significant undertaking uh, but if that is something that you are interested in then uh, you are most welcome to contact me or contact uh, the helpline at access now and get more information uh, on the, the possibilities there so if you are a member of civil society and uh, you want um, uh, you know, assistance in choosing the correct VPN for yourself or to explore other possibilities for circumvention, uh, 
then you're most welcome to uh, contact the Access Now Digital Security Helpline. Uh, if you are a member of civil society, that's a free service, and the uh, the experts there will uh, guide you in the right direction in terms of a, a VPN choice.